this presentation takes us back in time to look at behavioral and cognitive theories that have relevance in classrooms today. When we began this course, our focus was on the neurosciences and the physiology of learning. And we're now making a shift into the behavioral and cognitive theories of learning um, that came before the neurosciences. If we look at this timeline of learning theories, you'll see that, of course, the neuroscientists, neurosciences um, began emerging in the 1990s and over the last 20 years have begun to inform our practice as educators. But now we're taking a step back to the beginning of uh, theories of learning, um, starting with the behavioral theories that emerged during the 1920s to 50s, and then moving into the cognitive developmental theories that emerged from the 60s all the way up until the 80s. From a neuroscience perspective, we were looking at what happens physiologically in the brain and body when someone learns. We were also looking at how the brain changes over time, so the development of the brain. And lastly, we were looking at the parts of the brain that are activated when we perform certain tasks, whether it be thinking, acting, or interacting with others. While the neuroscientists were looking inside the brain to see what was going on physiologically when we learned things, behavioral scientists were focusing on learning from the perspective of a change in behavior because at the time we couldn't see inside the brain. So they studied learning by focusing on observable events and environmental, both environmental and behavioral. Cognitive views of learning came from a whole different perspective. Theorists who wrote re wrote theories related to um, learning from this perspective, looked at learning as um, change in knowledge. So the focus was not on behavior as it was on learning and how one changes their knowledge over time. And the way they studied learning was by kind of observing or making some assumptions about what went on when someone was thinking. Early on, as theorists were forming these theories, there was a great debate about whether one theory would win out over other theories of learning. Would the behavioral theories be more relevant or would the cognitive theories? And as it turned out, many theories have emerged since that time frame, um, but Early on, there was a struggle, and the thought was that there could only be just one theory of learning. Behavioral theories of learning that we're going to focus on in this class are probably theories you've heard a lot about in prior classes. Classical conditioning, Ivan Pavlov being the theorist behind that one, and operant conditioning, um, B.F. Skinner being the, the theorist behind that theory. Pavlov was actually a Russian physiologist and was studying the digestive system of dogs, but in doing so he found out some things about learning that had applications to humans as well. He was trying to determine how long it took dogs to secrete digestive ju juices and what he noted was that the time frame kept changing. Pavlov's now famous experiment involved using food and a tuning fork to control the salivation of dogs. He was able to condition dogs to salivate after hearing the tuning fork. 
Pavlov's theory of classical conditioning that emerged from all of his research related to the fact that you could learn involuntary responses to a new stimuli.